Thank you. Let there be light, please. Uh, those who are doing uh, the home sale of undercover, uh, Pastor Chris said something that I, I want only those who are doing that course to answer me. He said, if you want to be involved in the toddler's ministry, don't ask your husband. Go and pray to God. So those who were here last week, if you remember well, we were talking about authority in the family. So is it, if you go and pray about it, and you are happy about it, you want to come and help in the toddlers. But the husband said, never, never. Not in this family. You are not going to be involved in the toddlers. What do you do? Quickly. What do we do? You go ahead. Oh, okay. Can somebody bail me out? What do you do? Alfreda, please, come on. You obey the authority. Yeah, that's what we were learning. That uh, if your husband says, my dear wife, please, I understand you prayed, but don't go to the trotless things. You must obey the authority and keep on praying until your husband says, no, you can go now. Yeah. Because what will, what will it help if you come and help the trotless and when you go home, it's fight. Eh? It's not going to help. Hallelujah. So, I just wanted to say that because it's exactly what we were learning last week. Oh, on that note, maybe I must also say this. Uh, this afternoon, we're not going to have home sale because, as you heard, we don't have electricity this side of town. And, uh, you know, our home sale is very much dependent on the electricity. So, we will conclude our series next Sunday. Is that okay with you? All right. Thank you very much. I just said I must announce that before I forget. Yeah. Are we ready for the message? As I was preparing for this message, uh, praying, interceding, uh, by the grace of God, um, I prayed this prayer that God help me to preach the simplest of the messages. Let it be a simple as possible and then after praying uh, I was reading the Bible and then I just found myself asking myself these questions which verse is the most common verse in the Bible like the most most common verse in the Bible Oi, are, are they still here oh I thought they are gone long time ago man. oh I'm sorry teens can you please uh, go to your respective place. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, uh, as they are going, do, do we remember which verse is the like most common verse in the Bible? Yeah, obviously, John 3.16. Even the, 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 the theologians are saying that's the most common verse in the Bible. Now, which book, right, not before I come to the book, which chapter is the most common chapter in the Bible? Some sort. You people are knowing your stuff, eh? Can you give yourself a round of applause? I'm not going to go to other quizzes. I think you, you, you have already shown me that you know your things. Um, we're going to read Psalm chapter 23 this afternoon, this morning rather. And then I want us to read it from a new angle, as if we've never read it. As a matter of fact, each time when you read the Bible, you must read it with expectancy. Hallelujah. Maybe before we go, we, we, we actually read it, I'm reading it from the New King James Version. I want to say this, that most of us, when we read this chapter, we thought David here was just talking, was bragging about the fact that the Lord is his shepherd and he, he, he shall not want and everything. He, the Lord leads him and everything. We thought it was all about David bragging and showing, you know, goodness and mercy will follow me. It was all about David. I want to make it very clear that as we are going to read this chapter, let us realize that this chapter is not mainly about David. 70% of the time here, it's about God. 
So it's talking about what God can do to us more than what we can do to God. Hallelujah. So I want us to, I'm going to, if you listen to my tone as I'm reading, everywhere where it's talking about the Lord, God, His, I'm, I'm going to like increase the volume. Then, then that's when you will understand that this chapter is about the Lord. So the title of the message is The Lord and His Love. The Lord and His Love. That's the title of our message. Okay, let's go. This uh, uh, chapter starts with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, the Lord, makes me to lie down in green pastures. He, the Lord, leads me beside the still waters. He, the Lord, restores my soul. He, the Lord, leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for he, the Lord, is with me. He, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning. I want to give you praise and honor and glory. We've just read your word. Father God, they say this is the most common chapter in the Bible. But we believe you've got something fresh for us this morning. We are expecting, Father God, for you to speak to us. You know our hearts. You know our desires. You know what we need. And as we, I pray, Mary God, this morning, that you're going to touch somebody. You're going to encourage somebody. You're going to heal somebody. You're going to empower somebody, to enlighten somebody, to answer somebody's prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Once more, I want you to observe that this chapter, it starts with the word, the Lord. And it, it ends up, it ends, at the end it says, the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. At the end of the chapter, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So I said this chapter is all about the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't tell but to tell you that this is how we must understand it. That the Lord is supposed to be the beginning and the ending of our life. He's supposed to be the Alpha and the Omega. He's supposed to be the one that we know that my beginning is known by him and my ending is known by him. I'm telling you, my brother, this chapter, it can melt away your worries. It can melt away your, 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 your worries, your depression, your stress. If you can only tell yourself that my beginning is the Lord and my ending is the Lord. So if God is with me in the beginning and is going to be with me in the ending, it does not matter what I encounter along the way. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to quote it. It says that he's the author and finisher of my faith. He's the beginning and the ending. Talking about the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I like the, the Shangan song that says, It means my beginning is known by you and my ending is known by you. Hallelujah. Most of the people that are depressed, I must tell you, is because they are worried about the future. They are afraid of what will happen tomorrow. They are saying that with this bank balance that I have, what will I eat tomorrow? What will I, will I be able to to maintain the standard of life that I'm living now tomorrow. Let me tell you, if you can just tell yourself that uh, it is the Lord that is leading you. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 2. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me. My brothers and sisters, God is the one who is leading us. Hallelujah. He leads us. And I like the fact that he is the, the fact that he leads us is not only written in verse two, he also in verse three he said, He leads me in the path of righteousness. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the God that we serve leads us in the path of righteousness. When he's leading us, all we have to do is to follow one step at a time. 
one step at a time. You may say, I don't know where I'm going, but I know the Lord has been there. As a matter of fact, my brother, like I said, God already knows your ending before the beginning. Hallelujah. So when you are worried about a lot of things, just follow God, one step at a time. Every morning when you wake up, said, Lord, here I am, let's continue to, I'm following you, Lord. So we follow Jesus, hallelujah. And because of time, I'm not going to uh, go through all the verses, but I want to emphasize the fact that uh, the, the verse 4 says that though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the problem that we have that gives us depression is that we are afraid of evil. We are more afraid of what the devil can do more than what we know God can do. Let me tell you, there is no disease, there is no sickness, there is no problem that he cannot solve. There is no mountain that is too big for God. There is no problem that is too complicated for him. Complex as it may be for us, but to God, I'm telling you, he already has the solution. All we've got to do is to allow him to lead us. And he's not just a shepherd. John 10 says he is a good shepherd. He is a good shepherd. My brothers and sisters, we can trust in him. Even though we don't understand where we are going, because sometimes we'll go through the valley of shadow of death. It will be tough. We will lose the love, loved ones. We will be disappointed in life. But let's follow Jesus. And let me tell you, along the way, there will be things that will be attracting us, both from the left and from the right. But what we've got to do is to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and uh, finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. In this life, there are challenges that we cannot run away from. And I'm not saying because he's our shepherd, everything will be fine. There will be challenges, but in the midst of the challenges, we can always know that we are not alone. Allo hallelujah. Still on verse 4, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. For he is with me. For you, Lord, are with me. Let me tell you, when the Lord is with you, you are more than a conqueror. If God be on our side, who can be against us? By the way, I must remind you that greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world. So whatever comes, you can stand strong and say, I'm not facing this alone. I'm with the almighty God, the one who created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. People may feel pity for you. They may say, my brother, we heard it. Hey, you are in trouble. But just know that as much as people think that you are in trouble, you are not alone. God is with you in that trouble that you think it's trouble. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you this morning because we're living in a time where every day when you wake up, there will be new challenges for that day. There will be new something new. When you're still thinking, I'm resting, something is just happening. I'm telling you, don't focus on the things that are happening. Just know that the Lord is your shepherd. I am reminded, I must accept that I'm not a farm guy. I mean, I didn't grow up uh, taking care of sheep and everything. Uh, but we are told, probably it's still happening, that when you are a shepherd or when you're taking care of the sheep, during the, 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 the old times, what they did, uh, when you are a shepherd, you didn't like what I see people doing these days, where you find that they have a whip and they are, the, the cows and the, 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 the things are in front of them. They say you, you, what they did, the shepherd will be in front and the sheep will follow the shepherd. The reason was for the shepherd to be in front so that if there is any enemy, the enemy must first deal with the shepherd before it can deal with the sheep. Let me tell you, we've got the line of Judah who is in front of us. So no weapon, no jackalas, nothing can come to us and try to come to us. Oh, for, the, for, for those who don't understand, jackalas is Jekyll. There's nothing that can try to disturb us as long as we've got the line of Judah. Pastor Chris rightfully taught us last week or two weeks ago that when we look in the mirror, we must not despise ourselves. We must realize that we are the lions. Hallelujah. We are not just a cat. And I want to say, 
this morning that, and I, 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 I want to say that uh, when you are the shepherd and you're in front, then you can, you don't have to worry, you relax. As long as you're following the shepherd, you know that you are safe. The problem is if you try to divert to the left or to the right. Yeah, but during those times, because they knew that there will be some sheep that will try to do manga manga business. You know what they did? They used to put what they call sheep dogs at the back there. So that if there is a sheep that is like strolling, going round, there will be a sheep dog that will go on the side and push it back to the head. Hallelujah. My message is very short, but I believe it's going to encourage you. I, I, I want to dwell on this uh, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. When we talk about the sheep, it was the sheep dogs that are following the sheep. Making sure that there is no sheep that is looking backward or going to the left or to the right. But with us, my brothers and sisters, our sheep dogs, if I can call them that way, it's goodness and mercy. When we are following Jesus, there's something that is guaranteed. Goodness and mercy are behind us. They are guarding us. Hallelujah. So we just know that wherever we go, when everything is said and done, when we look back, we will just see the goodness. We will just see the mercy of God. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you that they didn't write surely by mistake. It's guaranteed. When you follow Jesus, goodness and mercy will follow you. I was reading different versions and uh, trying to check what other versions are saying. Some versions are saying surely goodness and uh, love. Some are saying uh, kindness and what, what. But I've just realized that all these things, uh, some are saying that grace and mercy. And I've just realized that I, I asked myself, which version is like really saying it? And, go, and uh, as I was praying, I just realized that it all comes to one word. When you follow God, grace and mercy, when they say grace and mercy will follow you, maybe just to remind you what grace stands for, grace stands for when God gives you what you don't deserve. And then mercy stands for when God gives you, I mean, does not give you what you deserve. Just to simplify it, Grace is when God gives you blessings that you don't deserve. But mercy is when instead of punishment, God does not punish you. Hallelujah. So you can walk freely knowing that you are not going to be punished. So you are not guilty. You are not ashamed. You know that you are free. He that the son of man sets free will be free indeed. Hallelujah. But then when I was checking this grace, mercy, loving kindness and all those kind of things, I just realized that it comes back to one word and that word is God's love. My brothers and sisters, when you are following Jesus, when you are following the Lord, the love of God is behind you. And when the love of God is behind you, it can, you can't go wrong. Hallelujah. Things may not be happening the way you wanted them to happen. But let me tell you, wherever you go, people will testify that we see the light. As a matter of fact, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. So where you are, people will see light. Hallelujah. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize. Fear nothing. It does not matter how long the journey it looks like. It does not matter whether you are taking long dry. But as long as you are with the Lord, as long as that journey is taking you to heaven, it's good enough for you. I want us to be encouraged to know that all the days of our life, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I, I want to say this because sometimes when you're going through tough times, you may think the Lord has forgotten about me. Let me tell you, the eyes of the Lord all the days of your life are upon you. There is no time where God can like forget about you and say, hey, by the way, there is my son, where, where? It reminds me of people who, who bake sometimes. 
uh, these days when you're having telephones and cell phones and stuff like that, you may put your things in the oven. And before you realize you're busy on the phone, talking about this, hearing this, and then you just hear the funny smell. By the time you go to the kitchen, you realize ah, everything is black. Because we're human beings, we are easily, we can easily drift and shift and forget what is the main purpose. But uh, I'm, I'm just reminded of my father. My father was a very good baker. So when he's baking his things, he will just sit next to this kitchen, next to the stove. And because of that, it was very difficult for him to burn anything. Because he will be watching every minute just to make sure that everything is fine. And he was very angry with us or any other person. If you're busy cooking and you're going out, you do some other thing. He said, when you're cooking, cook and stop doing other things. Uh, but enough of that. I just want to say that our Lord does not forget about us. He's watching our every step. And let me remind you, he's not surprised about what happened to you yesterday. And he knows what, is going to, what the end is going to look like. Hey, some, some of the things that are happening, there is that verse which we, we quote a lot. Everything happens together for good to those that are in the Lord. Hallelujah. But when the things are happening, hey, you are burning and you don't see the way, you don't see why it's happening. Let me tell you, I was so encouraged by another pastor who said that he lost his son at the age of four. Just imagine the whole pastor losing the son, four years old. But he said it was painful, it was painful. But guess what? In the funeral of that son and after everything, let me tell you, he said he, the, 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 the funeral of that son ministered to many people than all the people that he ministered to before. So as much as it was painful for the death, as much it, as it was painful for him to lose the son, and guess what? Even after that, God used him mightily to comfort those people that have lost their loved ones. Because when he comes and stands in the funeral or wherever, and he said, I lost my son at the age of four, those people who are mourning uh, their granny who, is, who died at the age of 70, then they become comforted. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that uh, if the granny dies at the age of 70, don't, don't, don't cry. Uh, that, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that if you can hear somebody saying, I lost my son, and this person is a pastor, he prayed, he did everything, you can really be strong and say, God, I, I, I thank you for, for all the years that you've given my brother, my sister, my mother, whatever. Hallelujah. So everything works together for good to those that are in the Lord. And then I want to conclude by saying, my brother, goodness and mercy will not follow you if you are not allowing God to be your shepherd. The question is, who is your shepherd? Who is leading you? When you make decisions, do you consult? Do you pray about it? Do you allow the Holy Spirit that is in you to guide you? Or you just take, use your common sense. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people who use their common sense and now they are regretting. It's about time that we as children of God, instead of, of using our common sense, instead of saying the majority of people are saying this, let's dig deep and allow the Holy Spirit who is in us to lead us. Hallelujah. And then, like I said, when we follow what God is showing us to go, when we go where he's t telling us to go, he will never take us to the place that we were not supposed to go. The fact that you are experiencing what you are experiencing is, God, is because God is with you and he knew that he's going to carry you through. Hallelujah. The mistake that we make is to think that we are all on our own. You are never on your own, not even sing a single day. Let me tell you, if God was to withdraw his hand, from your life, even just for a second, you cannot master breathing. You cannot live this life without the hand of God. The fact that you are still here, smiling, going strong, pushing through, is because God's hand is upon you. And I want to encourage you with this message, and I believe that whatever you're going through, I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to realize that it's not all about me. It's about God. 
and God is the beginning and the ending and is the one who is leading me in everything. Hallelujah. Are you getting something? Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father God, this message is short, but we thank you because we believe there's somebody here who has been encouraged. There's somebody here, mighty God. You know their heart. They were thinking they're all alone. Father God, they have been reminded that you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will be with us when we go through the shadow of valley. You will be with us when we go through the waters, when we go through the fire. And Father God, when everything is said and done, you are going to take Take us uh, to our place uh, forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, mighty God, that you are going to continue to minister to us uh, as we read. Uh, uh, Psalm chapter 23, we will realize that it's not all about us, uh, but it's about what you can do. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. <clears throat>